Great Lakes Prepping here with another canning video. Today we're whipping up a batch of homemade barbecue sauce. I love homemade barbecue sauce because you get such a layered harmony of flavors from sweet and savory to everything in between. Don't get me wrong, I do enjoy me some sweet baby rays, but let's not pretend that it's not just high fructose corn syrup in a bottle. The sauce we're making today is thick, bold, and just a little spicy. And no, we're not starting with ketchup. We're never starting with ketchup. If you ever even see a bottle of ketchup on this channel, you should assume I've been kidnapped by pod people and they have taken over my body and YouTube and you should call the FBI immediately. Or maybe Kurt Russell? I don't know. No, we're starting with tomatoes. You know, the actual base ingredient of barbecue sauce. You're an adult with free will and dignity. Quit using the devil's nectar as an ingredient and stuff. Anyway, we'll take this beautiful homemade sauce, can it up into some pint jars, and go through every step of the entire process. Let's get started by taking a look at all the ingredients that are going to be going into the barbecue sauce. First, we have a bunch of diced tomatoes. You can use fresh tomatoes that you've diced up or canned. I happen to have a ton of canned diced tomatoes on hand, so that's what I'm using today. Then some chopped white or yellow onion, some white vinegar, a little hot sauce, some steak sauce, or if you prefer Worcestershire sauce, I actually prefer to use an A1 style steak sauce. And then our sugars, we have some molasses, honey, and brown sugar. The brown sugar, unfortunately, was absolutely clumped together, so I measured by weight. It'll melt down just fine in the pot, but for presentation purposes, it didn't work out that well. Then our dry spices. We have paprika, kosher salt, onion powder, garlic powder, mustard powder, black pepper, and cayenne pepper. And as always, I'll have the full recipe, including all the ingredient quantities, in a link in the video description below. And the first thing I have to do is get my big stock pot going on pretty medium high heat and I'm throwing in the onion and the tomato. I need to let this simmer for a while until everything is very soft. Now obviously because these are canned tomatoes, those are already quite soft. But for the onions, they have to fully soften. Once this all starts bubbling, I'll turn it down to a pretty low simmer and let it go for probably about 20 minutes. Alright, it's been about 20-25 minutes and the next thing I have to do is puree this. So I'm going to use my immersion blender and just go to town on this mixture until it's as smooth as possible. If you don't have an immersion blender, you could carefully transfer all of this into a standard blender, but it's going to be very hot and potentially messy, so definitely take great care if you're going to do that. And once it's as pureed as I can get it, I'm turning the heat back on and I'm gonna bring it back up to a simmer. And now I'm gonna let it go for another 45 minutes. At this point, I'm just trying to reduce the sauce. That is, simmer off a bunch of the liquid so the puree gets thicker. All right, we've been simmering about 45 minutes and this is definitely getting pretty thick. So now it's time to add in all of our other ingredients. The white vinegar, hot sauce, steak sauce, or optionally Worcestershire sauce, molasses, honey, those big clumps of brown sugar, an ingredient I actually forgot to mention earlier, and that's some mesquite liquid smoke, and all of those dry seasonings. Now with my heat still on pretty low, I'm gonna mix all this together and give it a little bit of time to really melt down those chunks of brown sugar. And as I'm stirring, I don't really feel them anymore, so I think they've already pretty well broken down into the mixture. And so now I'm gonna hit everything again with that immersion blender and just give it another round of pureification. And now we're going back for some more simmering. A good barbecue sauce needs to be pretty thick and the way to do that is to keep reducing. I don't need to go super crazy on this, but it probably needs another 30 to 45 minutes. I'll make sure to give it a good stir every few minutes because as this starts to get thicker, I don't want any of it to burn or scorch on the bottom of the pan. All right, we've simmered this just about as far as we're going to. It's reduced a great amount and I'm liking the consistency. But before we start canning, I'm gonna go at it one more time with the immersion blender. There's always gonna be a little bit of texture in homemade sauce like this, particularly when starting out with a raw ingredient like 
actual tomatoes, but I do want to help it along as much as I can, and I guess if I had one of those high-end countertop blenders like the Vitamix or whatever they're called, I could probably get this pretty much as smooth as silk, but I'm just going to do the best I can with the immersion blender, and then we're going to move on. And in the meantime, I've been getting my jars prepared. I've got the hot water bath canner filled up with some water, and I put my empty jars in there. When I bring that water up to boiling, I'll really give those jars a good sterilization before we start canning. Now I'll often do this by just putting a couple inches of water in there, placing the jars upside down on the rack, and steam sterilizing them. But I already had this canner full of water from some canning I was doing earlier today, so I'm just going to heat it back up, boil those jars for a couple minutes, and then we're going to start filling them up. So when it's time to start filling these up, I'm going to move them over to the counter very carefully with my jar lifter tool, and I'm going to start ladling in that hot sauce. I've got very hot sauce. I'm putting it in a very hot jar, so I gotta be very careful so I don't burn myself. And today I'm using pint jars, and when I fill them up with the sauce, I wanna go all the way to the top, minus half an inch. That's half an inch of head space for these pint jars. And it looks like I'm gonna get three full jars out of this batch. A little bit left over, I'll just put into another jar and stick it in the fridge. No point in processing that, I'll just use it first. And to make sure I've got that half an inch of headspace, I'll use my little measuring tool. This notch here is the half inch mark. Put the tool on the rim of the jar, and I want the tip of it to just be touching the contents of it. And once my jars are filled, there's a couple more things I have to do. First, I'm going to debubble using the other end of this tool. I'm just going to kind of stir that sauce around a little bit, making sure to rub it against the inside walls of the jars, trying to dislodge any stubborn air bubbles that might be trapped in there. Next, I have to wipe the rims of the jars. Using a damp paper towel, I'm going to very thoroughly go all the way around the top edge of that glass to make sure I get rid of any food sauce residue that might be on there, which could obstruct the rubber seal on the lid and cause a faulty seal. And as for the lids, you know, the old standard was to also boil your lids. But in more recent times, the ball companies actually advised against this, suggesting that it could actually maybe damage the rubber seal. But they said you could still heat them up, even simmer them, for the purposes of sanitation. So that's what I do. I've had these simmering for just a few minutes, and now they're ready to use. And then I'm putting on the lids, followed by the rings, which I'll screw down finger tight that's snug but not overly cranked on and then they're about ready to go into the canner now i talked about having hot liquid in hot jars but i've also got hot water because i was recently using it to sterilize the jars and that's okay because if this was cold water and i put these super hot jars in i would have a great chance of breaking a jar the glass could crack because of that temperature difference so in the effort to have the temperature of the jars and the temperature of the water as close as possible before I dunk them in there, I like to use my little infrared thermometer to just make sure that they're about the same. And if the water is too hot or too cold in the canner, I can adjust it. If it's too cool, I'll just start heating it back up a little. If it's too hot, I'll give it a couple more minutes to cool a little bit more. Or I could add a little cold water in. But once they're pretty close to the same temperature, it's time to put in those jars. And I want to make sure that there's enough water in the canner to have a solid inch or more of water above the top of those jars. Now to bring it up to a full rolling boil. Once it's at this point, the processing time has begun. And for this recipe, I need to process for 20 minutes. That's 20 minutes of full boil. And by the way, if you live at a higher altitude, you will have to adjust your processing time for this and every recipe. It's going to be longer depending on how high up your altitude is. After 20 minutes, I'll turn off the heat, take off the lid, and just let these jars sit here for a few more minutes. Let that temperature just start to come down a little bit. Then I'm pulling out those jars and setting them on a towel on the counter. And over the next little while, I expect to hear these lids pop. That is, the lid being sucked inward as those jars start to cool, thereby signifying a successful seal. And as always, if any of my jars don't seal properly, well, it's not considered shelf stable, and I could reprocess the whole thing, but generally, on the occasion that it happens, I just stick that jar in the fridge and use it first. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen sometimes, and it happens to everyone. Now I've got some delicious homemade barbecue sauce to use whenever I want over the next several months or longer. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay up to date with all our latest stuff, including future canning videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.